Hi, everybody. <laughs>Welcome to Revlog, where Brian is a bit under the weather. I am. I am. Send your sympathy cards. <laughs> to Brian at fbcsa.org. <laughs> he needs some sympathy I do. today. I do. So we love you, Brian. So this is... <laughs> we're not going to have to deal with yeah, that the whole yeah, time, are we? I think there, I'm afraid you are. There's a line. <laughs> Look behind you. You just crossed it. <laughs> but this is Revlog, where we are moving forward into the book of Daniel. We've so been we, talking about this for months. We have been talking about this for months, and we're excited to get to That's Daniel. Right. There are some exciting days ahead yeah. um, talking about Daniel. That's right. Um, although you don't call him Daniel. You call him what? I call him Daniel. <laughs> That's not even what I was thinking. I was thinking Belteshazzar. Oh, Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar. <laughs> Belteshazzar. Right. Belteshazzar. That's his, that's his Babylonian name. <laughs> Which is a side note. It's interesting that we call Daniel Daniel, but when we talk about his comrades, we refer to them as the, the Babylonian names, Shadrach, we, Meshach, and Abednego. We don't say Hananiah yeah. and Mishael. Mishael and, and Azariah. Azariah. Yeah, that's Azariah. Right. yeah. yeah. The, Maybe it's just easier, but, but... I think so. Yeah. I think so. What will we call... Uh, Brian today. So do we need to give him a Babylonian name? Yeah, we should think about that. <laughs> Sniffles. Mucazar. <laughs> 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 I don't know. We would love to hear your comments on a Babylonian name for Brian. So if you want to comment below and, right. and send those in, <laughs> yeah, um, we'll take the best one. And that's what we'll call them the rest of the series. Thank you. That's <laughs> so dear of you. Hope you get better Thank soon. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. that. Well, since he's not feeling well. All right. And will you, will you help us jump in? What? So today we're in Daniel chapter one. Yeah. What were your initial reactions to Daniel chapter one? Well, we first get introduced to the, the kind of the characters. I mean, there's mm -hmm. going to be several kings that come through, but we get to these he's Hebrew um, heroes, really. Um, and I find it interesting Um they're in captivity. That's they're, that. And that's not going to change in in the book of Daniel. So it's kind of part of his reality. Um, but what he's refusing to do, and we see this as an, a really a thread throughout the Old Testament, that although they're in captivity or although their mm -hmm. situation is not exactly what they would want it to be, that these guys are going to maintain their um, integrity, their their commitment right. to the Lord. And so even though their situation is 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 dire and uh, in that way, the king finds favor in them and grants them. And, yeah. and so you could look upon them and like, man, they, they've got it good as a pair, opposed to the other mm -hmm. Hebrews. Yeah, and the way the way Daniel approaches this is so wise and cunning, the way he presents this to the commander. That's right. And and sets it up so that God would prevail. That's right. right? Over and and the, the, even that the commander would not lose his head because right. these guys are starving themselves or whatever. Daniel's like, listen. Yeah, he I'm, covers all the bases. That's does. right. I'm, I'm, like, I've got you covered. I'm, I'm not going to indulge in these things, even though they're offered to me. So some, yeah, sometimes, you know, things that, that your situation presents you, you've still got to maintain a level of integrity to who God has called you to be. And that's what Daniel has said. You know, mm -hmm. I, I could I could easily partake in this and say, God has given me all these good things, you know, right. and so I should partake. <clears throat> Daniel says, no, I know the, the, the path that I'm supposed to take. And I think that God's going to honor me by by doing that. And indeed he does. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Brian, what were your initial reactions here? I, first of all, I find it very interesting that it, apparently Daniel and his cohorts are contemporaries with people like Jeremiah. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, we it's we don't often think of the overlap right, of, these, right. of these folks, but it's the same kind. It's the same time mm -hmm. there, and so they're in that same universe there. Um, but here here are four. Young men and, and indeed a whole nation. I thought you were about to give us four points. I was like, well, <laughs> Ryan's, Ryan's going deep here. Wow. Here are four. No, so you're four young men. Yes. With every head bowed. <laughs> and every yet, you have closed. to alliterate. Uh, all four yeah, exactly. Points and a poem at the end. Uh, <laughs> no, the four, the four the young four, men. The four young men, which coincide with four points, by the way. No. Uh, the the uh, And indeed a whole nation. I mean, their, their entire... Culture is swept away, mm -hmm. and yeah. so this is this is a traumatic time. These are refugees now, albeit they are nobles, and and they're apparently treated pretty well. But but they are refugees. They are refugees, and they are out of their homeland. And so, uh, how how they are responding to this is absolutely remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, they they are right. still faithful people. 
And Daniel is not pining away. It doesn't right. appear right. to be. Uh, he doesn't appear to be pining away. He says, how am I going to live here and now? That's how right. am I going to live here now? And and they get taken into the king's service. They pay attention. These four young men, they pay attention to the learning. Mm-hmm. I mean, they become wise and learn. I love in the it. Ways. In literature. Absolutely. And, uh, in wisdom. I love that. that, that the history and the literature yeah. and the wisdom. And and uh, they become very conversant culturally. Now, they don't they don't um, lay aside their integrity, but they they are very conversant culturally. And so, I just I find that very interesting. That um, if anybody messes with my way of uh, living, uh, I get a little bit out of sorts, or a lot out of sorts. Right. I think we do that as a as a Christian culture. I mean, their world had been destroyed, That's right. right? Completely yes. upended. And you're exactly right. Um, they maintained their faith yes. in the midst of their world. They they weren't cursing God or, or blaming God, even they though weren't. they had been completely. Nor um, were they cursing the culture into which they had been thrown. They they were taking the best of that and and um, making something of it yeah. Uh, yeah. for God's purposes. And I think one of the things that we're going to see here in the coming chapters is the ability to speak truth to power. Yes. And we've talked about that in, the, in other studies that we've gone through, but, but that's going to be a really interesting thread that that's right. they position themselves without losing their integrity, conversant in the, in the culture, and, but, but to be able to say, yes, but I think you need to look at it this way, or this is what God is saying to you in this time. That's and, right. And by positioning themselves in their way without um, obfuscating their their call, it's well, right. Well, and it, right. It, it That's was, right, Aaron. It was in their relationship with the Lord and in their integrity that they find themselves in that That's position right. to That's be right. able to to speak. That's right. right. It was yes. because they maintain their faith, and they they they're well spoken, and they they do speak in such a way that they they truly are wise, and they truly care. Uh, mm-hmm. They care for the people. Uh, later on, you know, when there's going to be. Um, uh, you know various things happening. They they advise the king on mm-hmm. on how things ought to be going. I mean they care. Yeah, and yeah, they care. and they they're filled with God's uh, wisdom and compassion. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Aaron, what was a question that came well, to mind? Based on all of that that we've just been talking about, I I I need to look at my life. We need to look at our lives and say, okay, the things that are coming at us, do do we just accept them and just because, uh, oh, God sent me this, it, it must be good if just because it's available. Mm. Um, like these guys are given all these right. wines and delicacies yes. and things, and they're saying, Ooh, you know what, yeah. I just because it's available doesn't mean it's God sent. Sometimes mm. we need to say. Is this the path that I need to take? And so we need to assess all these things, knowing who God's called me to be and shaped me to be. Um, do uh, is the path before me uh, one yeah, that well, I need isn't to... the the Pauline phrase uh, though everything is uh, mm, profitable, not everything no, no uh, permissible. Yeah, that doesn't make it beneficial, that's right? Isn't isn't that, that the phrase? That's exactly. Like that? That's exactly yeah. right. He he can just because uh, it. We can uh, we can avail ourselves, right? Should we? Right. Doesn't mean we should. Yeah. That's right. Right. That's right, Brian. Brian, for you, what was a question that, that came uh, out of this text? One of the questions is: these other men that were taken into the king's service, did they hold it against these four young men that they too had to eventually go to the vegetable diet? I mean, apparently <laughs> they they made that standard operating I procedure. <laughs> yeah, I would have exactly. <laughs> wow, um, that's that's a little. Known uh, well, <laughs> overlooked question. What you you didn't note there is it took all of them off coffee. Yeah, right. And so none of them were allowed coffee it's anymore. Part of the lost chapters of Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the apocrypha somewhere. Uh, they, what is your real imprecatory question? Imprecatory psalms is what it is. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> May he cut off caffeine from you. Uh, the the uh, the question. The real question is um, our. Our social uh, position as Christians in the future may change. Some say it already is. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, What are we going to do with that? I mean, are are we really going to rail against, you know, uh, the the times and say, you know, things used to be this way? Or are we going to operate from the margins? Are we going to tear a a book from Daniel and, and say, or tear a page from Daniel's operations manual and say, uh, mm-hmm. Here's how we can speak truth to power. Yeah. Here's how we can uh, operate here. Christianity has always operated at its mightiest from the margins. Yeah. I mean, the Roman Empire, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. 
Yeah. So yeah. how how can we do that? That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Good question. Well, help us think through these things and help us rename Brian. And we'd love <laughs> we'd love to hear those things in the comments below. <laughs>